What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Log On Games podcast for Friday, October the 1st, guys. We are in officially in spooky season. It's official. <gasps> Heck yeah. Happening. Life is good. Uh, on this episode, we're going to be talking about a whole bunch of news. We had a crap ton of stuff happen this, this week of just like tiny news drives. We got some... Uh, acquisitions we got some betas we got some info on N- nintendo's 4k thing just all bu- a bunch of little stuff so we'll just kind of and then if we have time me and andrew the two andrews high five we might talk a little bit about <laughs> kana and we'll just see oh okay okay let's see if we have time for that but <laughs> um, on this episode with me today you can find him at brown berserker Across the seven kingdoms. We have Andrew with us on the podcast today. What's up? What's up? How's it going? Excellent. Cool, cool weather up north. Feeling good. Mm, how cold Hi. is it? Too cold, in my opinion. Too cold. <laughs> uh, like high 50s during the day? Yeah, it's like the worst. Day. I hate it. I, I love it, man. It. <laughs> love it. Fight, 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 fight. <laughs> <laughs> I was in I was. Maine uh, about a week and a half ago, and it was I was like, I have to wear a freaking hoodie in September. I don't like it. But you don't worst. like it? I love no, hoodies, I man. I love hoodies. Give me f- I mean, I do love hoodies, but I, I like, put this in perspective. I wore a hoodie. I wear a hoodie every day for the most part. The 80 degrees outside, and I wear a hoodie. So. Jeez. I could live in Florida all the time. So you like so. to sweat. That's what you're saying. I don't sweat. I'm skinny boy. You don't sweat? Okay. <laughs> I do sweat sometimes. Okay, sometimes. But I've never sweated before, actually. Uh, Montez sweat <laughs> is must be a burning defensive <laughs> end for the Washington football team. So He is. He's really good. <laughs> He's really good uh, on uh, Madden career modes if you ever get him. Okay, I'll, I'll put that in mind. Uh, also, with us on the podcast, you hear him every week for the most part at X user rate X. We have Matthew with us. What up? What up? Mike, Mike, what? My turn. What's uh, cracking? <laughs> <laughs> Not much. Playing little FIFAs today. Five little FIFAs. Little FIFAs the last couple My days. That's meowing. Shut up! I got him. <laughs> oh, I wish I could have. I didn't, I didn't hear it. <laughs> I didn't hear it either. <laughs> he, uh, when he. That's he cool. Your cat speaks English. He does. He gets lonely or just like wants to know where the dogs are or where a human is. So, like, if he wakes up from his nap, he'll just start yelling throughout the entire house until someone <laughs> says something. <laughs> or he that. finds a dog. Ah, ah. <laughs> That's basically what he does. <laughs> and I'm like, shut up. He's like, oh, someone's here. My bad. My bad. I didn't know That's basically there. what I do when I wake up. Same. <laughs> Just start yelling. <laughs> oh, yeah. Get him. Ah. Yeah, hundred percent, man. Oh. Well, Why? let's get into the old rigmarole. Rigmarole, bro. This podcast is called the Log On Games Podcast. It's a weekly show in which our hosts discuss a variety of gaming news topics from new games, big announcements, events. And more new episodes upload every Friday, wherever you want that it to be. If you want to stream it on podcast services, it's everywhere. If you want to watch us, we are on YouTube, uh, which is where everyone watches. I mean, I'm not going to put this thing on freaking Vimeo or God, I don't know, some <laughs> other video platform. <laughs> what if Vine. I could put this whole podcast on TikTok like two minutes at on- a time? On oh Vine. my god! <laughs> you have a lot of content. <laughs> that would take forever. <clears throat> Doesn't it kind of look like Andrew is like in this serious conversation, like to find out where to send nuclear weapons or whatever, and his dog is his bodyguard, like watching, making <laughs> <laughs> sure nobody's coming. <laughs> That's totally what he's just like. Oh, I, I got him. I got him. Don't worry about it, man. <laughs> I got him. I got him. 
It's better in my room. I don't know if you guys can see. I have an air mattress with all my stuff piled up right over here. You see a skateboard and a guitar hero guitar? Yeah, mm-hmm. rock band. Rock band. Rock band, band. Rock band my bad. I didn't, mean, I didn't mean to insult anybody. Yeah, and then over here I have a trash can. I have some toilet paper. Heck because yeah. I have a runny nose because of COVID. And this has been my COVID room for the last... Man, today's Thursday. I don't even know when I got back. Sunday? Saturday? Last, Something like last that. Last Saturday. Last Saturday. I got that. <clears throat> so, you know, got some hand sandy. Got your bathroom bucket somewhere in there? I just pee on the floor. Okay. That's my pee corner <laughs> over there. <laughs> <laughs> he's got no, he's I got a wa- he's got a water bed. He just pees in it. <laughs> yeah, I have a water oh bed. Goodness. No, I have these disinfectant wipes. So if I like leave my room, you know, disinfect my life. But do it, crazy, do it. crazy. Um. So let's start out. Well, first you can follow us at Log On Games if you want to. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, the old, the old stuff. But we start out every episode with our fantasy critic update. And boy, do we have one since the last time I've been on, at least. Um, Matthew. Yeah. Trying to see if you get if you had anything. Eastward and uh, Lost and Random, so. I think, came out since the last time I was on. Oh, yeah, yeah, maybe so. So you got some points. We're all in the fifties in points right now, which is it's getting it's getting heated. By the way, still not done with it, uh, but Eastward, probably my, at this point, at this point, probably my game of the year. It looks cool. Real, real, real good. You know, I was looking at Braylon's stuff. Tom Clancy's The Division Heartland. I remember that that thing was in beta. It was supposed to be out late. Now, interesting. Just interesting. That's all I'm going to say. Um... I had uh, Kana come out since the last time we were on. I'm sitting at an 82. Gave me a solid 12 points right there. You got a little, little clap action. Um, Ship to think of? Uh, I love it. If you scored it out of 100, what would your score be? Um, so I am, I think... On like the last third, Andrew, I know you've beaten it, so you can tell me if I'm wrong. But I just lost. I just had like the big cutscene with that, what I think is the final boss. Like you know, you go to the little shrine that's in the middle, and you go up the stairs and up the mountain and everything, and then yeah. you had the cutscene. So I think I'm on like the last third. I assume I do this part, and that's the end of the game. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So I've played a, a, a good chunk of it. I played about what sixty six percent of it, maybe. Mm-hmm. If we're doing it, 66 if we're hours. it in thirds. Yes. Um, I'd give it like an 85. You know, okay. somewhere around there. Okay. Uh, just give me a little bit more points. <laughs> <laughs> 82 sits wrong with me. But, uh, um, cool, cool. Shibby has had Death Loop, which is giving him a bunch of points. A whole bunch of points. Got 18 points for Deathloop right now. Sitting at an 88 on Open Critic. Yep. I, I and made then, it purchasing uh, that tonight. And then Jason uh, has uh, half of his games that uh, will not release this year. So we'll see if he ever updates this. I'll send him a text. If he does, I mean, he's got, like, Returnal is at 86. Psychonauts 2 is at 89. So he's got some things that have points on. Technically, mm-hmm. he is in the lead right now. So. Games that we have coming out soon. Uh, Jason has Hot Wheels Unleashed, which is getting pretty decent reviews. Comes out yeah. today, September 30th. Uh, Shibby has Super Monkey Ball, which is not getting great reviews. Or for previews, I should say. Really? Uh, the two that I've seen were like, it's whatever. Wow. Interesting. I'm um, surprised by that. But yeah, that's, I mean, that's about it. I put some bids on stuff because... I had Dying Light 2. They got pushed till February. So I had to drop that. So I'll have two open spots. So I put bids on two games today. So we'll see if I get those. I had those. two open I'll spots. And I, looked, I looked a couple days ago, and I just did not see anything that I trusted to get. There's some games I just 
that I would get if I knew they were coming out this year. Like, oh yeah, I agree uh, with you on that. I even have a game still on my list: uh, Little Devil Inside, PlayStation mm-hmm. game. I've not got any update on, so that might get delayed as well. But we'll see. Oh well, let's get into the news. We had a whole bunch of news. Um, I'm hiccuping. A whole bunch of news <laughs> this week, like I said. In the wee hours of the morning, Xbox actually had a Tokyo Game Show uh, thing, a little announcement thing. Uh, so just, I'm just going to kind of blow through these. If you guys, you know, we'll talk about them a little bit, but then I even have even more news that's not on this thing if we want to just get to it. But just kind of get the update of the last, I would say, week and a half of things that have little nuggets that have dropped here and there. You know, E3 is over. Show. People are like, well, we didn't announce this thing. We'll just go ahead and drop it. You know, you feel me? Um, Phil Spencer talks about wanting to increase the Japanese game lineup. He's talked about that for a while. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, Tango Gameworks is developing a new game with the Evil Within 2 director leading. So I'm down with that. Andrew, do you ever play the Evil Within games? (laughs) Sadly, no, and it's kind of like blasphemy considering like I love Resident Evil, so like I should play those games. Um, I think at some point I need to go back and play those games because I really like that director. Don't know why I haven't played those games, actually. (laughs) No clue why. (laughs) What is happening? (laughs) He's having a sick moment, I think. I was blowing my nose <laughs> off camera. Oh my god! <laughs> I, I knew what you were doing. I was just like, I'm not gonna say anything. I was over on another page <laughs> no, looking at a game over myself. <laughs> I was over at another page looking at a game that was in the fantasy critic stuff we were talking about, and I switched back to this, and I just see your fist come out. Yeah. I was like, what is happening? <laughs> that'll be on. That'll be our TikTok for this week for sure. <laughs> 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 good, good, good answer. Yeah, I love the Evil Within two games. They're really, really good. Um, they're all on Game Pass too. If you're feeling feeling into it. Um, speaking of Game Pass, Scarlet Nexus and more are headed to Game Pass. Uh, the biggest title, is Scarlet Nexus, but AI the some Somnium Files, which is a game that I've almost bought on Switch like ten times. Every time I like go on a vacation or something like that, I look. And it's like always on sale and always has decent reviews. So now it's on there. And Scarlet Nexus got really good reviews. I never played it, but it, I know it's it got a ton of really good I have reviews, not so. played that either. Uh, also, Mighty Goose, which I don't know what that is, also available or playable today. Upcoming, upcoming Game Pass titles playable upon release include Back for Blood, Forza, and Halo that are all coming up. Um Redfall, Starfield, and more will be localized for Japan, so they're good for them. Swearies, The Good Life gets an Xbox exclusive demo. Don't know what that is. Looks Japanese. I'm in. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> Eternal Return <laughs> gets a release date and a trailer. New trailer for Eternal Return preceded the news uh, that the game is coming to the Microsoft Store on October 19th. And um, that was about it. That was that was Xbox Tokyo Game Show get up. Yeah, for some Andrew. reason, I, I, I don't know, the Xbox over there has not mm. done well. And I think it might be because it doesn't have uh, the Japanese developers backing it. Like, it's just, I remember, like, back when, like, the, the, the fatty, the original Xbox came out, like, I don't know it just never sold well. I, I don't know the numbers on the 360. I'm sure it was better than the original, but like, I don't know. They've always lacked uh, over there. Yeah, yeah. 360 had at least some like Japanese games. Like you remember, like like the Blue Dragons or the Lost Odysseys of the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah. yeah, Xbox One had none of it, and it sold mm-hmm. like two. I think it. I think Japan in Japan it sold two Xbox Ones. I think that's what they <laughs> sold over there. <laughs> <laughs> uh and it was on accident you know someone didn't know what they're buying you know but uh <laughs> yeah phil spencer's definitely talked about trying to get back in that market they need some japanese games i think scalebound was supposed to be 
the start of that and then it got delayed. And, I was literally about to bring that game up. Yeah. So, you know, mm. do what you got to do to get to get them. I'm about to sneeze. So if you see another thumbs up, maybe I won't. You know, COVID's <laughs> weird. See, if Sony was smart, they would pick up Scalebound and make an exclusive on PS5. Exactly. If they were smart. No. But they're not because our next story, PlayStation officially acquires Bluepoint Games. No, just <laughs> very smart. <laughs> it's still very smart. Uh, next game planned to be an original, not a remake. This comes from the old Igan. IGN. Sony Internet Na- Interactive Entertainment has announced yet another studio acquisition Blue Point Games, the developers of Shadow Colossus remake on PS4 and the most recent PS5 remake of Demon Souls, which Andrew played and liked. It converted me. Blue Point and PlayStation have worked closely together for years, but the news comes after the studio's latest success on Sony's confirmed Demon Souls has sold more than 1.4 million copies since release. Um, and this is a PS5 only title. So this is not one of the games you can also play on PS4. Right. Um, so Andrew, good. what do you make of it? I mean, this was, I don't want to use the word like inevitable, but like, it just makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like their, their remakes, like the, the Sony exclusives have been like incredible. So like, really it good. just makes sense for them to pick them up. I mean, I'm curious, like they did fantastic work on the remake. So I'll be curious what type of original title they'll be putting out. I'm not going to lie. I, I'm, I'm still like on that whole rumor of uh, Metal Gear being remade by them. And I would love to see that. But hey, like, I love, you know, we'll see what, what they pump out next. Right. I assume it's, thinking... a, it's an Animal Crossing competitor is what comes out next. Animal Crossing. Got it. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking if it is an original game, it will be something in the realm of the remakes they done. Like, like the Shadow Colossus or the Demon Souls, like. Mm-hmm. Some sort of third person action, darker kind of sure. digi game. Yeah. Hmm. Makes sense to me. Or who knows? It could be freaking. They got, I don't know. They got a vision Marvel game coming out or something. Star Wars, WWE, something. WWE. Disney gave them something. Um, but yeah, excited about that. Everybody's been kind of waiting for that to happen, so it's been a it long just, time. Yeah. Make it. it makes sense. It's a good one. I, I mean, yeah, that's one of those studios that if you asked me where they would be in five years, I'd be like, uh, under Sony's umbrella. <laughs> like that just makes that's <clears throat> kind of the assumption. So, oh, righty, moving on. Halo Infinite Beta Weekend number two is open to everyone. Ooh, everyone that has a huge Xbox. Full playlist or PC. Full playlist info reviews. Oh, yes. um, they just tweeted out, want to join this weekend's October 1st through 3rd Halo Infinite Multiplayer Take Preview? You can download the build via the Xbox Insider Hub right now. Also, I might just do this live on the podcast, even though when you're listening to this, it's not live, so I'm sorry. But I do have a friend code that I was going to give away. Um, Because in the email for this beta, it's like, here, invite a friend. Here's the code. Uh, So I put it out on Twitter, and I think I had somebody respond. So congratulations, sir. Uh Uh-oh. As long as you have an Xbox. If you have PC, I think this is just an Xbox code. And I will shout you out right now. Shout it out. It is at Sadman, Sadman Axel. I won. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you have an Xbox, I'm gonna message you. I'm gonna message you right now. I'm just gonna say, "Are you on Xbox?" If you do, you have code coming your way. If you? not, someone else will. Um, <clears throat> Andrew, have you played the Halo beta at all on PC? No, and like they just had another one, and I'm like, let's play Destiny instead. <laughs> so, <you know? laughs> well, this one's open to everyone. Are you gonna hop on? I want to, and maybe I should. So, yeah, but I do want to play it. I do want to play it. Last weekend, <clears throat> we had a new map from what the previous thing had. So, like a total of like four maps now. And then they also dropped 
uh, capture the flag, stronghold, which is like ABC capture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like a new gun that's like a lightning kind of thing and a new grenade that's very similar. So the grenade that kind of like throw out this grenade and anybody that's near it, like lightning kind of chains to them. And it can that's cool. Multiple different enemies and stuff like that. That is cool. Um, super fun. I'm so ready for this game to come out. This weekend, weekend number two, starting Friday, October the 1st. So from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific time and from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific time are the dates in which these things will happen. Capture what, the flag um, on. I was going to say, other than capture the flag, is uh, is there anything different or special about this one than, than the last one? Are they open up more stuff for people to do? or Yes. Like that? Um, are you talking about this weekend? Yes. Yes, there is. So we have fragmentation. I wonder if that's a new map. Uh-huh. That's something I recommend. The name sounds familiar. Um, total control on fragmentation, which I believe is stronghold. Maybe that's something different. I don't know. Um, Slayer on fragmentation. They all fragmentation. Slayer. I believe that was really good. Big, is the big team map because this weekend was going to be the big team beta. So let me read some of this real quick. Okay, that's new. Anyway. That's what it says. Content from the previous beta, including 4v4 Slayer, will also be available during weekend two. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. I think my cat just knocked over the trash can. Um, <laughs> this weekend will feature big team battle for the first time and will be open to a much larger audience. Yeah, so this is big. Fragmentation will be a big team, which I believe is the map that we saw in the trailers. Um, okay. That looked like Valhalla a little bit from Halo 3. Like th- th- that kind of thing. Um, so excited about that. Excited to get some big team in there. I believe it's what? 8v8? 12v12? Something like that? I don't remember. But I'll find yeah, out I don't remember way. either. Uh, excited. Really excited for this game. It's really good and I want to play it. Where does big team fall in y'all's rankings of things you like to do on online halo because i it was at the bottom for me well it was not the bottom for me brs only was at the bottom for me other than that <laughs> <laughs> it was i was talking to andrew monroe and tanner in xbox party the other night mm-hmm. and i was talking about halo as in i'm so excited for this full game to be out with all the game modes and stuff because yeah that's the best part about halo is you're going to play Slayer a lot and stuff like that, but just like getting on and being like, let's freaking go into big team battles, let's play some capture the flag, big team, let's get on the Warthog, let's get the flag, let's win the game. Or, you know, like, mm-hmm. you guys want to play SWAT, you guys want to freaking, you know, I, I think the game mode where it was in Halo 5 where it's like each person has like one life and it's 4v4, forget what it's called. It's like, it goes by rounds, like once you lose that life, whatever. That just cool. having, just having, and like Griff Ball, freaking Griff Ball, let's go. Mm-hmm. Just having all these things being available, yeah. so we can just hop on and play whatever we want. If we want to play sure. big team, we can get in there and play big team. If we want to play whatever, we can just do that. So I'm excited okay. for this to be something besides a four v four thing. So yeah, I'm excited. cool. I think for me, I was just so bad at the game. Uh, uh, competitive shooters were not a thing that we did before Halo. I mean, maybe some Call of Duty, but is really we played Call of Duty and we played Call of Duty in the era of uh, you played online a little bit, but let's play the mm-hmm. new story. Like this, is, it was just different. Um, and I was so bad at Halo that I like legitimately played it a lot because it was fun to play and worked on getting better. And for mm-hmm. me, Big Team was the most out of control I was ever in Halo because there's just too many people. <laughs> and it's yeah. like once I get to that point, I was like, okay. I am no good again. I don't like this. So it's not big team's fault. That's what I'm saying. Um, yeah. So like, I don't mean to bring destiny into this play, but like um, first person shooters in general. So like when in destiny we will do like uh six V six. And I've noticed that I like, I like three V three more because there's more, it's more slow and strategic. Now big team as a whole sounds cool because it's more chaos. So I do like chaos mm-hmm. in that regard. So I think that could be fun. Yeah. 
So I think it's the right word. I think to me, big team is chaos mode on Rocket mm-hmm. League. Yeah. It's where like I feel like I'm decent at Rocket League and I can do some things and you throw many chaos match and it's just mm-hmm. like, well, everything I know is out the window. What's the point? Yeah. <laughs> it's just kind of like whatever. So that's a good that's that's a good analogy there. So are you two like strict have you like when it comes to first person shooters, it's strictly been controllers for you guys? Yeah. Oh yeah. For sure. I see like so like once I dabbled into like the PC realm and switching to keyboard and mouse, like the accuracy, like my accuracy got so much better. And like, cool, cool. I think, I think now playing with a controller and trying to aim would be so much harder. So like, yeah, it's I, I, I used to for sure. Yeah, exactly. It's like, I, I kind of like wish I could still use a controller because mm-hmm. like, so like to bring a, a weird example is to bring up like Kana when I'm like, you know, aiming my bow, it feels so weird because I'm used to the mouse <laughs> and then using the stick to aim is just kind of weird. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah all, if that's all you depends. know, then that's, that's, yeah. It also yeah. depends on the game. I think Warzone is one of those games where the aim assist is so strong on console that it's almost better to use a controller. Oh, did you um, see the, uh, the Halo Infinite aim assist video? I did. Dude, it was However, crazy. I looked at the comments and there was a bunch of people being like, try to recreate this and couldn't. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so, so you did, like a I, cheat was enabled or something? I mean, it's the beta, so it could have just been oh, like, okay. like, it could have just been a bug or something. And I, I'm not saying it wasn't real. I'm just that saying I read nuts. the comments and a lot of it was like, tried to recreate this and couldn't kind of thing. Oh, okay. So, gotcha. Interesting. interesting. Okay. Yeah. And I, also, also tend, I also tend to play. Like Andrew, you like uh, my brother Andrew. He likes yeah. <laughs> um, uh, assault rifle type things and in, in, in games a lot. Um, and of course, you know, you got, you got to whip out your pistol every now and again. You know what I mean? Finish that off. But I, I play as much as possible. I want single shot weapons. I like snipers. I like rifles that I can, you know, feather it myself or mm-hmm. whatever. But um, so yeah, well, they got them. They got they got them in this game. So. I usually am an assault rifle person. Mm-hmm. However, like during the beta, I'm trying to like play all the different mm, mm-hmm. weapons and stuff. And boy, do I love the battle rifle. Let me see. It's yeah, not, I'm a, bi- I'm a VR up, guy. At least so far, so far on every game mode, map, anything, you start it with an assault rifle and a pistol. So the battle rifle is like on the map on certain maps. And let me tell you, boy, I've been just doming people. You know what I mean, Andrew? <laughs> just doming people with that battle rifle. Yeah, Love the needler. I think they toned, I think they toned the needler down a little bit, but there is some new one shot weapons like the skewer that basically can just like even on big team battle. I'm sure that's going to be a big drop on a big team battle map because it's this gigantic freaking rail gun that just like. Oh well. Is this back to uh, single wielding weapons or mm-hmm. dual wielding? There is no du- dual wielding. Okay. So okay. We are. You got your one weapon, and that's it. You don't have like a pistol. You have a pistol. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're, you're just, just like di- you're swapping out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, pistol okay, solid. That's... It's not overpowered like Halo Two pistol or anything, but uh, that's good. It's good. It's good. Yeah, it's I was, good. see. Good pistol. Going back to the conversation we just had, that's why I love the needler because you don't really have to aim well. <laughs> just, just true. get make if they're on your screen, it's fine. <laughs> it's <basically laughs> new. Uh, the new carbine is somewhat similar. It's like a three round burst thing, but it kind of homes towards the person you're shooting at, oh. which is kind of cool. Okay. I, See, I, it, I, I prefer single shot weapons, and then I would prefer automatic weapons. The burst fire thing, I'm just the worst. I mean, I, I am, I turn into Harry from Dumb and Dumber shooting like this, trying to get around <laughs> and not hitting anything. That's me when I do a burst fire weapon. So. We'll see if they add any more weapons. I don't think they're going to add any more weapons this weekend. But I, I did confirm, yeah, mm-hmm. big team battle is 24 total players, 12 on each team. So I think it used to be 8 on 8, and now it's 12 on 12. It's going to be even oh, more wow. chaos. I love it. And there's nothing, I will say this, there's nothing more fun. There is things more fun. But <laughs> capture the flag on big team is always, it's always a good time. Because 4v4 capture the flag is fun, don't get me wrong. But... The more people you can get in a capture flag game, the more fun it is. You know, the more yeah, epic yeah, yeah. it is when you actually get a capture 
or it's like, listen, I'm going to, you're going to have half a second when you go in here. Cause you're going to have three people freaking guarding the flag. Mm-hmm. And you know, I'm going to grab the flag. I'm going to go up the boost thing. Someone's going to come in on a freaking vehicle, catch me, bada boom, bada boom. And it's going to be the most epic moment of all Halo history. That's what you want right there. You know, it was my favorite part about, uh, capture the flag. It was the, uh, the, the, uh, the commenting of flag dropped, flag taken, flag dropped, flag <laughs> taken, a, like this over time. and over and over. Just like <laughs> so, they did an interesting thing with capture the flag this year uh, or this game. So you, I think you still can. There's like I've seen some videos that are like freaking Call of Duty Apex, like. Titanfall running on walls and like doing crazy movement. Oh, wow. Kind of stuff with slide stuff. It's usually on PC. Um, but I think that's very rare. I don't know if that's going to like end up being like five years from now. Everybody, the pro gamers are just going to be like flying all over the place or what. But for the most part, for normal people, when you pick up the flag, if you're just normal walking with the flag, whatever, hoot, 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 no one can see where the flag is like it used to be. Like really? That. You like the other teams, like, I don't know where he is, but if you start sprinting, then you get revealed. You're also going faster. So you can sprint with the flag. It's also not a one hit kill. If you melee someone with the flag, which I am very sad about, but, uh, yeah, it is interesting. Cause like I was playing and I was like, so-and-so revealed the flag carrier revealed himself. And I was like, I have the flag. Am I revealing myself <laughs> right now? I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> But yeah, so that's what it is. If you sprint with a flag, everyone knows where you are. Kind of I don't thing. know how I feel about that. I've what I was doing stra- strategic wise was c- getting the flag, going like halfway. Once I'm on like the second half, like back to the base, I just all out sprint. It's freaking going. Gotcha. You know, the closer I get to it, and that's when sp- it doesn't necessarily matter if they know where I am or not. Um, but yeah, excited for Halo. May probably stream some this weekend. Definitely tomorrow because I'll still be cooped up in this room so we'll have some big team streams so go find us at log on games on twitch and uh let's play some freaking big team battle what is, i don't forget what they said capture flag slayer all sorts of stuff it's gonna be a good time um let's go to some nintendo news developers are making games for a nintendo 4k console that doesn't exist this comes from bloomberg.freakingcom uh, well, I'm going to get to the actual... Let me find... Let me find... Okay, employees at 11 game companies said their teams are in possession of Nintendo's 4K development kit for the Switch. The companies span the globe, ranging from large publishers to small studios, including at least one that has never made a, ga- a console game before, Zynga, Inc. According Bazinga. to the employee... Bazinga. According to the employees uh, who asked not to be identified... Um, because they weren't authorized to discuss their projects publicly. Um, mm-hmm. Matthew, what do you what do you make of this? Yeah, I saw another article, but it's on The Verge, but it 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 mentions this Bloomberg report, and it's just saying Switch Pro was real, and um, yeah, developers were told to make games for 4K re- uh, resolution for Nintendo. So I think that. The Switch Pro was real, and for whatever reason, it got backburnered. Maybe, maybe it just was a COVID thing. Maybe they were looking at the COVID stuff and the production, and the, and said, you know what, we're going to have to char- charge way more for this than we want to. And Nintendo says we're going to keep our price to a certain point or something. I don't know. I don't know if that's the case or not, but I would assume that means that a 4K version of it is in the future, whether that's three years from now or you know a year. Who knows? But um, I don't know. I miss I miss it, and I never knew it. I wonder if this all coincides with the uh, the chip shortages last year mm-hmm. and everything. So, like like you were saying, you know, it's like okay, like we have this prototype or whatever, but like let's not mass produce it until things get back to normal. So, right. I mean, right. this, the switch is still selling like hotcakes, like regardless. So, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they're good. Um, I'm calling it now. Not Call this it. year's Game Awards, but next year. Game Awards 2022. We're going to get this announcement. announcement. Yeah. I agree. And it's going to come out in the spring of 2023. Hmm. 
twenty calling it here. You heard you heard it here first. Jeff Keeley. What? Oh my gosh, Jeff Keeley's calling me. Hold on. Yo, Jeff, you're on. You're live. Oh, I, I gotta take him off speakerphone. He doesn't want. To okay. He said he said I wasn't allowed to say that. He said I wasn't allowed to say that. So sorry. So sorry. But it's been said now. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm sorry. Oh, see, there hey, was man. an update on the uh, Bloomberg um, article. Apparently, Nintendo took the kit back from the uh, team that decided to reveal that information. So, <laughs> you say anything else, I'm going to take my kit back and not be your friend. <laughs> and also, it no one has seen Zanga. or heard from those people since they said anything. <laughs> Who knows? Considering they only named Zynga in this. I assume that that's the one. <laughs> I feel like they were typing the rest of their name and then they got kidnapped. So <laughs> they're really like Zingatronics. Um, <laughs> I'm excited oh. to have a switch again in a week. Are you when the OLED work? comes out? Um, oh yeah, you sold yours to get that one, right? I did. I did. Uh, actually, the first game I'm going to play is going to be Pokemon Unite. Okay. I uh, have it and I played it for about 12 seconds because I don't have anybody to play with. Oh, we're going to play so, it. So. And then the second game I'll play on it will probably be uh, Mario Party Superstars or whatever it's called. Mm-hmm. That's the end of October, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I've been on a Switch kick lately. Switch kick? Again. What have you been playing? What have you been switching? Uh, Dicey Dungeons, and I just got back into Octopath Traveler. Mm. Yes, I need. I literally was thinking about it yesterday. I was like, so, I gotta pick it back up. Yeah, what I did was it's when so the good. game released, I completed four of the stories, and now I'm picking it back up and doing the other four stories. Gotcha. See, I. Yep. No, I I haven't finished any of the stories, but I am. Oh jeez. <laughs> I am. I am doing them all, like at a similar pace. So, I love that done. game so much, yeah. man. It's fantastic. It's, love I love that game. Cannot wait for no longer Project Triangle Strategy, but just yep. Triangle Strategy. Yeah, that looks cool. Um, <laughs> Square is going to have this this like line of games that are just like some of the greatest games that have ever been made. Some really innovative things. Did you play and the gonna, uh, the the card game they just announced? They had a demo on Switch. I had the demo. Yeah, I played it the other yeah. night. I, I, I love like it. it. Yep. I did too. I love um, it. But that was the that was the most hype that I was about anything in the whole direct was that. But, agree. Uh, totally agree. But, uh, <laughs> it was a good direct, but yeah. that was the one that was like, this speaks to me. Um, but uh, yeah, Square is going to have this whole list of games that comes out in this Octopath and Triangle <laughs> Strategy or whatever. People are going to look back one day and be like, those games are incredible. Or what are they called? Don't worry about that. The names are dumb. Don't worry about it. Just play the games. <laughs> they they just hit that like nostalgic side of me so hard. You know what I'm saying? Like the 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 art yes. direction, the music, like everything about it. I love it. Yeah, but but what I've learned about some nostalgic games is when I go back and play certain games um, because of what I remember them being, I go, wow, mm-hmm. games have really come a long ways. And oh, these sure. games give you the nostalgia while still being a really good solid new game oh yeah yeah so the blend of art style especially on octopath and the 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 same team that's doing triangle like it's phenomenal yep Yep. i'm ready yeah okay i'm gonna blow through some of these i'm on nival's twitter because he's got all the goods and i'm just gonna go down the list because there's been a lot of little nuggets that have happened uh, over the last nuggets nuggets i love nuggets uh, according to Kotaku, the rema- a remastered Grand Theft Auto trilogy is slated to launch in November. One, two, and three. Anybody I'm sure care? somebody out there cares. I don't. <laughs> Save the date, Jeff Keeley says. The Game Awards will be Thursday, December the 9th, live in person from the Microsoft Theater and streaming live everywhere. Are we going? Jeff, are you going to... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call Jeff back real quick. Hold on. <laughs> He's so stupid. Jeff, Jeff. Are you are you gonna send me? Are you gonna send yeah. us some tickets, some free tickets? He hung up on. Me. Where Honestly, is it again? I, go ahead. It's in L.A. Oh, that's could not yeah. be farther from me. Microsoft <laughs> Theater. It's like right there where the Staples Center is, right across the street from where they do E3. Would you say that the announcements there have almost lined up against E3 and or are better? 
Because there's some pretty killer announcements mm. at uh, VGA. Yeah, I think. Um, I think from here on out, it might be. Because mm-hmm. I don't know. Because it's, 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 it's very I think much it's, gone like this. It's been different in the last two years because last year there was no E3, so everybody's either doing mm-hmm. stuff themselves. So yeah. By the time the Game Awards got there, they had a place to finally announce something, so it was mm-hmm. really good. Mm-hmm. And then this year, people did do E3, and like PlayStation just freaking did their thing. So I don't know. Usually, it's like it's the sec. It's literally like six or seven months, whatever, from E3. So it's like a good time to announce something. Sure. Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. I'm excited. Love me some Game Awards. Yeah, let's get it. I, December the ninth. I think that's a is, uh, that's an interesting conversation though um, about that. I think that oh, with E three having to skip the year kind of thing, uh, that really lost them a lot of. They'd already kind of lost some momentum. Not that they were bad by any stretch of the imagination, but yeah. they had at least at least like plateaued, and it feels like video game awards are still just kind of steadily slowly growing, and there's like no person in the media video game world that, that these companies respect more than Jeff Keighley and like they, yeah. they'll do it. They'd like, they'll do anything for him because he does stuff for them all the time. So um, that's, it's all about relationships and he seems to be the one mm-hmm. that has all of them. Well, I mean, we had one until I spilled the Nintendo pro news. Now he doesn't, <laughs> now he's not my friend. <laughs> yeah. Once companies started pulling out of E3, unfortunately, like that was the, de- the demise of it, you know, like yeah. people, I guess companies figured out they could do their own big thing without having to be attached to it. So, mm-hmm. well, I mean, it's definitely, it's <laughs> definitely they could get back to that, and they they, they still have enough uh, enough clout that they could, you know, say the right things, do the right things, and pull all those people back in if they really did the right stuff. Yeah. But who knows what they'll do? We'll see. Moving on with this uh, new stuff. Andrew, Monster Hunter Rise coming to the PC, 4K 60 frames. Are you down with this? So my my buddy actually tagged me in Discord on that today. And like, so what's weird is I got um, Monster Hunter World on PS4 and then I bought it on PC. And I mean, it was a major upgrade. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this upgrade is that dramatic for me to want to purchase it again. And I really, really loved Rise. I just haven't played it since. So right, like yeah. I think if I was still dumping like I don't know 30 hours a month into the game I might consider buying it on PC but like I don't know like there's just a lot of other games that I want to play and I don't know if I'll be picking it up on PC and I'll probably just continue playing on Switch whenever that mm. the, the big update comes out next summer so Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. All righty. Well maybe I'll have to get it on Switch we can play together. Oh yeah. Of. Um, Matthew, we talked about this a long time ago. Destruction All this is according to VGC. Destruction All Star Studio Lucid Games has been handed the Twisted Metal franchise. Sources have told VGC. I think that is pretty incredible. What they should have done in the first place is what I think. Well, Destruction All Star is a really, really solid game that doesn't have a lot of game modes or like it makes you feel like okay. Well, I mean, the gameplay is really good, though. Like, really, really good. And, um, yeah, I don't... It's only it, it only takes tweaks to that and, and additions to that to make it Twisted Metal. And so yeah. I, I hope they use same engine, same all everything. It'd be a phenomenal game. So. Sure they will. Okay. If they use the same engine and everything, they could pump that out pretty quick. Mm-hmm. You would it's think. A, I mean, Destruction All-Stars is a really solid game. It is. They're just... It lacked a few... Just, like... Uh, quality of life type things, just like partying up and playing games as a team and all that stuff. It was all way more difficult than it should be. Yeah. So, but the gameplay is really, really good. I hope it. I hope it's true. That's all I can say. Um, Spider Man Two will be darker good. than the first game. Marvel Games is Bill Roseman. If the first Spider-Man game was Star Wars, Spider-Man 2 is kind of our empire. It gets a little darker. Also mentions that the Wolverine trailer has Easter eggs. Ooh. I wonder if that means like there's actual Easter eggs, like colored <laughs> eggs somewhere in there that we're missing. <laughs> That's what he said. Like 
Dude, that's uh, if I, if we ever make a trailer for anything, let's just put like a little tiny Easter egg somewhere. I mean, like, you don't see the Easter egg. And people are like, yeah, get the Easter for egg. what? I'd be like, for Easter. <laughs> for Easter. Egg. We heard we heard it was cool to put Easter eggs in your stuff. So, <laughs> um, I would assume, yeah, I would assume with with Venom, it's got to be yeah. darker. Twas what I was going to say. So and I, <laughs> I think. <laughs> With a lot of other people online, that King the Conqueror is also Venom because there's a there's a comic book part line that has that as the story. Because like when he first started talking in that trailer, it's like that's King the Conqueror for sure, and then he turns into Venom. So I'm thinking maybe they're one and the same. Interesting. When it started talking, I was like, is that Venom? That's if they want it to be darker, like, they also need to put a dance sequence in it for that's, Peter. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Smart. That'll that'll really upset me. AK make it darker. So <laughs> quick time dance. That's darker for quick you. Quick time dance. <laughs> <laughs> but make it really, really hard. Like if you miss one, you fail and you have to start completely over. <laughs> and it's like a it's like a five minute ordeal. Jeez. <laughs> uh we got our PS plus lineup for October revealed. We got Hell Let Loose, which is a PS5 war multiplayer game thing that just came out. Mortal Kombat 10, or X, if you will. Oh, sweet. And PGA Tour 2K21. Okay. So Something for everybody. Do, do I have... Which, if there's if, if you're interested in golf games at all, the only two golf games... Well, say the only two golf games worth playing is... is that game and everybody everybody's golf, but now you have Mario Golf, so that's also fun. What about Golf Story? Um, golf Story, right. great, much different. Yeah, <laughs> much different. Like you don't play Golf Story because you're like, man, I really, I'm, I'm, I want to play some golf today. <laughs> yeah, it's a great game. Um, but which, by the way, I was just looking up Sports Story, um, which mm-hmm. was one of the games that Jason had on his thing, and I saw it, and I was like, I wonder if they had any news on it. The last thing they said was in June, and they basically said. Just bear with us. It's going to take a little longer to come out. They didn't say a date or anything. They just bear with us because it says there's a tennis part of the game, and that kind of has ballooned into like a full fledged like tennis career with multiple stages and phases and stuff. Oh wow, that's cool. Like they said, it seems cool, so we're just going to go with it. Like okay, cool. (laughs) So put all the content you can in it. Also, we need to talk about this because this could possibly be the best news of the week for Andrew. Oh, Marvel's Avengers that, is headed to Xbox Game Pass on September the 30th. That's today. So what's funny is I actually don't <laughs> have Game Pass, but if I did, that I wouldn't have any uh, excuse to uh, try it out. So if someone gifted you like a month of Game Pass, you know, you would have to play it. I'd give it a try, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I had two people that are on Xbox <clears throat> text me this week and were like, um, should I try Marvel's Avenger when it comes to Game Pass? And I said, sure. I said, if you like it, I'll start over with you. But only if you like it. If you don't like it, I'm not freaking doing this again. Because it's there's no mm-hmm. cross save, there's no cross progression oh, or any of okay. that from PlayStation, which I have pumped some hours into, we'll say. It was my mm-hmm. most played game last year, shocking the world. Okay. You're still waiting on that raid. You know what? I'm not really waiting on anything anymore. I, I'm, I will play Spider-Man when it comes out, and I will play the raid when it comes out. But will I max out Spider-Man? You know, that's the question. Like, will I be in there and be like, you know, screw it, maxing out, doing mm-hmm. doing the, all the bits. But, you know, now that it is on Game Pass, if it does take off on Xbox and we get a player base where there's more than three people, you know, Twitch streaming Avengers at one time, and people actually like the game. I yeah. would definitely get back into it. And Is it crossplay at all? No. Okay. <laughs> all the things that I need right now, it is not. <laughs> it's not cross play. It's not cross save. It's not cross progression. The only thing that crosses over is like I forget what they're called, units or whatever things you buy, like skins, hopes with, and dreams, like that, the microtransactions, <laughs> hopes stuff. and dreams. That stuff <laughs> is connected to the Square account, so. That will switch over. Um, 
This includes Game Pass for cloud and PC as well. Players will get access to the complete Marvel's Avenger experience, meaning the new War for Wakanda expansion and every post-launch hero plus mission so far. Nice. You get it all. That's quite a bit okay. of content, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a crap ton of content, which was the main problem when the game first came out was the obscene amount of bugs in the game, which is the main mm-hmm. problem. Uh, but now they have the majority of the bugs ironed out. The second problem was the lack of content. Like after you beat the story mode, it was like you do some things and that was it. So now there's a crap ton of content. If you're a new player, like there's a, if you like it even a little bit, there's at least stuff for you to do, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There, there could up. be a resurgence here. Like, do they have uh, microtransactions <laughs> in there for like cosmetics? Yeah. So like, you know, having this many millions of players like having access to it, this could possibly save it. Possibly. And they just put oh, in sure. Captain America's Infinity War skin, guys. So go grab it. Oh snap! It's a good. Mm-hmm. It's a good skin. It's a real good skin. Yep. Yeah, Black Panther's still pretty new too. Say what? Black Panther's still pretty new too. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. Got all kinds of things. Um. What else? What else? Super Nintendo World Theme Park at Universal Studios Japan is getting Donkey Kong expansion set to open in 2024. I want to go there so bad. Voiced by I Seth Rogen. Want... It will be. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> I wasn't on the podcast, but man. Let's go. I know. What they can't, let, they can't let like. that laugh slip in there, though. It'll take him out of character. If he's got that I guess. Laugh in there. I guess. I like <laughs> Seth, Kong Seth just... Rogen. I like it. Donkey Kong is just smoking weed the entire movie. I can't I picture Pratt doing that voice. Like, has he? <clears throat> is there any like clips of him doing that? Like on like Twitter or anything? I, I honestly know. think he's just gonna sound like Chris Pratt. Oh really? I think it's just that's gonna a be shame. His voice. I don't want it to be. Um, like I want it to sound like the Mario we know. You know what I'm saying? Well, he the guy maybe. the Mario we know that just does the wahoos and stuff. He's in the game, or right, he's in the movie, yeah. so he'll be doing those things. But yeah, I think it's gonna be like a. I think it's cool they included him, but I'm like, just let him voice Mario. But, you know. It's happening. But the most important thing that made me the happiest was Jack Black being Bowser. Oh, dude, yeah. So fantastic. (laughs) That cast is so stupid good. Like, if they were on any movie together, it's like, well, I got to watch this. Yeah. Whatever this is. really funny. Yeah. Um, Just kind of going through now. I know. Did any of you guys see the new Pokemon Legends Arceus trailer by chance? How new is it? A snippet. Like this snippet. week? No. It showed off a new uh, evolution from Scyther, mm-hmm. which was interesting. Um, looks cool. Excited to play the game and see what it's all about. That's all I can really say on that. Um, PlayStation 5 has officially sold over 1 million units in the UK as of August. Fastest selling PlayStation console in UK history. Whoa. Congratulations to those who got one. <laughs> Did you guys see the uh, picture we got on The Last of Us Day? Yes. I did. I saw that. Yes. It's happening. It's happening. And they also talked about the multiplayer Last of Us game and how they're hiring still. And it's, yeah, it's going to be a big one. I think this is going to be a big time. It's yeah. not going to be an expansion or anything close to a $40 game. I think it's going to be a big, a big time multiplayer mm. game we're dealing with here. Seems to be. Seems to be. <laughs> Um, I think that's about it. It's about it, boys. Okay. Um, we have a, good- a little bit of time, Andrew. If you want to talk about your experience with Kenna, I talked about mine a little bit, but yeah, um, it's you, uh, you've beaten the game. Yes, I have beaten the game. Uh, I was gonna ask, what difficulty did you play on, or are you playing? Uh, on? the middle one, whatever that okay. was called. What I think okay. is normal, but it's still somewhat difficult. I've okay, had I've I, gotten stuck quite a few times. I started the game. I thought it was too easy, so I put it on uh, expert. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then I had to, because I am who I am. I I refuse to to uh, go back on difficulty, so I I pushed through on expert all the way through, and it was. Did you have some difficult? Oh yes. Like the last <laughs> yeah. boss. The last boss took me. I would say at least twenty tries, <laughs> at least. <laughs> I've yeah. heard, I've only heard about the last boss that is ridiculous. That's all, that's all I've heard about. Yeah. It takes so. like all, yeah, a lot of the mechanics I mean, you've learned and just throw them all at you. I took, I mean, I 
the the last boss that I played, which was I guess the big boss, because there's a lot of bosses in this game, but um, the second spirit boss thing with the like tree and the little heart thing in the middle of the tree. You know yes. what I'm talking about? I love that fight. That was love a good fight. That fight. It took me. It took me quite a while. It took me quite a while to beat that. We'll just say. That. I love that fight to the point where yeah. I was like, "Screw it! I'm going back to the village. I'm going to try and find more things and upgrade more things." And then I came back and I was like, "All right, I upgraded my stuff. I'm ready to go." And I just freaking dominated it. Like, didn't even have to heal at all or anything. I was like, "I don't know what happened to me this run. I became a pro gamer all of a sudden." But <laughs> okay, so here's the question I have. So, like, on the difficulty you're playing on, does the rot um, recharge over time on their own? Um, I don't you know think the, so. I think okay, I have to like do damage in order for it. Okay, okay. So an expert, yeah, you have to do damage to build it up to get your to do the rod abilities again. So um I think though, like I don't know if this is the same on, on when you kill people, sometimes they'll have like the yellow orbs that pop out. Yellow of orbs, like yes, yes. But yeah, uh, what's floating around when people talk about this game is everyone keeps comparing it to the old school like PS2 games, Jack and Daxter, stuff like that. And I think mm-hmm. that's a really good comparison, honestly. It has that type of feel. It's not really like, it's somewhat not, okay, it's not open world. You have a big play space, but you have these like linear paths and places yeah. you can traverse yeah. and you get abilities and you might not be able to open this now, but later on you'll get another ability to open up that pathway, you know, that you went through so it's got that like old like ps2 era type of feel the thing that's very surprising to me about the game was the combat and the boss fights like yeah way like they were like way cooler than like i could have anticipated to be honest so many boss fights beautiful game too oh my god like i had a friend that played on ps4 pro and I saw the uh, comparisons, and it actually still looks pretty good on PS4 Pro, but like on PS5, it's like holy crap! Yeah, it's good. It's yeah. good looking. And it's uh, like what, it's only it's only like uh, forty bucks. Like, $40. I, I lot, yeah, I, I got on at midnight, and I'm like, okay, cool. You know, like I haven't bought that many games on like PS5, and I'm like, okay, cool. Like, here's my here's my next seventy dollar purchase, and it said thirty nine ninety nine, and I was like, wait a minute, do I have like credit? in my like <laughs> my PlayStation wallet and I was like holy crap this game's only 40 bucks like I think, I think because yeah. it's their first game ever and PlayStation's like let's get you know let's put $40 on here yeah I mean it's, it's what like a 15 hour game probably on average um, uh yeah I, I probably around 10 15 yeah yeah yeah. So I'm thinking, I, I assume their mindset's like, let's put it $40 to get people mm-hmm. to know can and then their next game we can bump up but it's it's by far it's a sixty dollar game, at least to me. Like it's a full fledged. This should be in oh, a it's normal, in a normal world. This is a sixty seventy. I I I one hundred percent agree. Like if if it had the seventy like seventy dollar price tag, like which I was already ready to pay, like it it feels like a full fledged game. Like just because it's forty bucks, don't don't think you're being skimped out on stuff. There's collectibles and all the achievements you know. or the trophies okay. and whatnot. So, you say even with it just being like a, a fifteen hour game, still think. Like the quality's there, but is there enough? Is there enough quantity for that? You think? think Yes. Like, I mean, considering that we've been paying, we've been paying like sixty dollars for like you know however long now for games. Like, I've paid so like my this is the example I always bring up, Zone of the Enders. I paid fifty bucks for it when it first came out. Like, was it PS2? I beat that game in four hours and I haven't touched it again. Like. I can't tell you how many games I've I've spent fifty bucks on and like played eight hours and like you know said and done. We're now mm. like generations way in the future now, and I'm buying a PS5 game for forty bucks and I'm playing it for ten to fifteen hours. That's great to me, yeah. personally. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like, do you think your next game would be a another game, or do you think it'll be a kind of sequel? It's got to be. A um, I think. I, I hope they either do an expansion or a sequel personally, but if they also do another game along the, like the same like lines that they're doing here, like if they take what they're good at and they do a new IP or continue either way, like they've got me, they've got me till grave. Like they've got my money. So, okay. I just feel like if this was 10 to 15, if they can come out with a 20 to 25 and charge full price for it, that makes sense to me. As their, yeah, I mean, if, their next game, if yeah. I'm you know I mean? PlayStation, I'm telling them make a sequel, 
make it, yeah, 20 to 30 hours, somewhere in there. We're going to charge $70 for it and freaking, like, take all the time you need. If it doesn't come out for five years, it doesn't mm-hmm. come out for five years. Who cares? And we'll do it and just going to be kind of tuned by the show time. show a trailer yeah. <laughs> every show two trailer. weeks for a year. By the time... <laughs> You know, by the time it comes out, hopefully enough people have played this, and it's probably been the free game of the month at some point, and stuff like that, and people realize how good this game is. And so they'll be excited, kind of like a Horizon situation where no one really knew Mm. what Horizon was, and then now people are really excited for the second one. Same thing for this. But, like, this being their first game ever, kudos. Oh, yeah, they came out the the gate swinging. Like, this is a really good first game. That's awesome. That's really good. I almost yeah. feel like this won't be a free game of the month, and this will just go to the collection at some point. Uh, yeah, it can go either way. It is yeah. like the negatives of it. I will say the player movement does feel PS two e when I first yeah got on. You're just like it's yeah. very kind of like stiff and stuff, and like your double jump feels like I'm not even moving. <laughs> it's, Sometimes it's, it's an interesting so, choice. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. So it does, but it's like their first game, so I kind of give it a pass. But um. And then some of the puzzles, like you said, and like this stuff is very PS2. Like there's nothing, yeah. there's no yeah. uncharted puzzles in here that are going to like stump you. I don't, I wouldn't say. Yeah. It's a, it's pretty, it's pretty easy stuff, but like, yeah, the, the combat solid. I don't, I'm oh, not I, thinking about any of that stuff when I see some of those little red orbs come up. I'm like, oh, yeah. let's freaking go. I tell you what the uh, support from the team. So the first day I played it, my number one complaint was like how slow the camera was. And I had the camera like maxed out and I had a problem trying to keep the camera whipped around me while the boss was running around me and I couldn't literally the next day they patched it. Apparently enough people said something that they patched it and you could whip that camera around like crazy day two. So like they're like the support behind the game. These guys are just on it. And I love that so much. You hear and that was, EA, also, when you have a problem, you can patch it the next day. <laughs> I'm also thinking this is kind of like the uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales treatment where two or three months from now we get a uh, native 4K 60 mm-hmm. frame like ray trace mode or something like that. Like maybe even if it's not till next year, like spring or something next year, like they'll get a, a performance bump or because I feel like some of the like I'm playing in in on performance mode, so it's upscaled 4K at 60 frames. Yeah, I like the definitely, performance mode personally. I definitely feel like they'll do a Spider-Man thing. We get native 4K, and then the cutscenes will be a little bit smoother as well. Yeah, and so that's definitely gonna happen. But super excited to finish that game. Yeah, uh, it's a it's a world that like I don't want to leave. To be honest, like I, I now that I've beaten it, I, I have more incentive to like go back and platinum it. And there's like a there's like a couple areas I actually haven't unlocked yet, and like some other collectibles and stuff. And like, yeah, it's it's a world that just like sucks you in. It's just it's so much fun. It's so I think much it's fun. just a, it's what play well, which Xbox has none of, but PlayStation and now with like Ratchet and Clank and yeah. like Little Big Planet, like they have that family friendly thing going. Yeah. In this like with the rot and with her. Yeah. Like you're talking about, you're talking some money. If this thing can like blow up with Kenna two, freaking, you can sell so many rots with so many hats. You know what I'm saying, Andrew? Oh, for real, dude. They can go into Walmart. They got and my they money. Are. They got my <laughs> money. <laughs> <laughs> it's good oh, stuff. Right. Go play it. Um, any final thoughts before we end this thing out, Matthew? We'll start with you. Hmm. My final thought is just the one thing we didn't talk about. I, I mentioned it before on the uh, podcast, the eFootball that was coming out that was the free, what used to be Pez and now is eFootball. Mm-hmm. Not very good. It's not It's not very good. Uh, the, the biggest surprise is that Pez has brought up this, um, <clears throat> just very slowly grown this game for years and years and years. And even like, Pez 2021. I played the little free trial or free version of it or whatever. I was like, eh, it's not bad. It's okay. And then they come out with this eFootball and it's really bad. It's not good. Um, I think, well, they've, it's meant to have cross play between everything in the next couple months. That includes mobile. That is a weird choice to me. <laughs> and that tells yeah. you, it explains a lot why the game acts the way it acts when you play. You feel like you're playing a console version of a mobile game sometimes. But yeah, not very good. Um, so yeah, A for effort. 
D for execution, I guess, on that one. So <laughs> I, play, I downloaded it, it, it I played play, a game so and a half and deleted it. In two or three years from now, maybe it'll be good. Not maybe good. so. And um, but I there's definitely it's got like a lot of I've seen a lot of stuff where streamers got on and streamed the game and then in t- twenty or thirty minutes were like yeah, we're deleting this. We're gonna we're gonna move on to something else. It's a shame. So, yeah, you would I think like idea. with a free to play yeah. game like that, they can get feedback of being like, these are the things that we hate and that they'll see a lot of, and then you can go ahead and fix those, even if it takes a year, year and a half, and then <clears> you don't have to worry about like like FIFA where it's like the we come out with a yeah. game every year, so this next year these are the specific things that we're gonna work on, and if even if it's not. Like you know, EA. Yeah. How many times mm-hmm. in, in Madden have they have we wanted to fix this to franchise mode, and it's been like five or six years, and they haven't even done it? So yeah, the, I think the pro, the biggest problem is the game plays bad. If your game plays bad, the other stuff is kind of irrelevant. I I kind of would liken this to NBA Live, where it's like you can have all the feedback in the world you want. That game has so far to go to be as good of a gameplay as Two K it's not even close. And that's kind of how I feel about this. It's just like, this is not, it's just not a good game right now. Um, And, and I don't think it's something a patch can fix. I think it's like, what the heck were y'all doing this year? So. Andrew, any final thoughts? Honestly, my, my rant on uh, Kenna kind of took my final thoughts. (laughs) It's real good. It's It's real good. It's so good. Someone, like myself, who's been waiting for Ratchet and Clank to go on sale. Same. And it hasn't. I think it maybe went on sale for like 7% off one time. So like instead of $70, it was 63 And I was just like, come on. <laughs> we got to do a little bit better than that. Um, mm-hmm. So having this be $40 and making me scratch that itch has been really, it's been really good. I've been excited for this game and it has not disappointed. Do we know how many hours uh, Ratchet is? <clears throat> how no large idea. the game that is? I can find out. Ratchet. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of upset at myself because I really want Returnal and it was on sale for I'm like 50 bucks and yeah. for like a week or something and I didn't buy it and now like I really want to play it and it's back to 70. Is it? <laughs> yep. Yeah. I'm in a similar situation. Yeah. So same thing with Ratchet and Clank, like when it's on sale, See, like I'll definitely get this that. This is um from how long to beat.com. It says <laughs> okay. Ratchet and Clank average main story it's 11 hours. Main plus oh, extras, wow. 14 hours. Completionist, 18 hours. For that's, a, wow. that's almost the same as... Canada. I usually wow. play... My gameplay is usually a little bit longer than what the average is for the most part. Are you, but still, play, a 20 hour... I, I mean, main plus extras, which is probably what I would do. I'm looking at maybe 18, 19 hours probably. Okay. Clank, which is not that much longer than... Mm. I'm probably 10 hours into Kenna right now. And I'm going towards the final third yeah, of the yeah. game. Of the they story. have a Blockbusters uh, sale right now, and Returnal is on there, so you can Wait, get what? the. There's a there's a it's a, it's on sale again. Ooh, so for how much? It is well the uh, the digital deluxe edition is twenty bucks off I've, from eighty to sixty. The regular edition. The regular, regular edition regular. <laughs> is forty nine sixty nine, so fifty bucks from seventy. <gasps> Thank you. Andrew, let's do it. Let's <laughs> Thank, do it. You. <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Is Ratchet and Clank on sale? You know, it, Sackboy You can't is. have a blockbuster sale now. He's like, Sackboy is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Thank just you. scrolling I'm down through. I don't Thank sure. you, Matthew. I'm going to confirm this with it. another website about Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart's run out, uh, run time. Um, and it is confirmed. It says, expect your playtime to increase. Hold on, hold on. Rift Apart takes around 10 hours, ignoring most of the collectibles and side quests. If you choose to find some collectibles, complete most of the side quests, quest, expect your playtime to increase to around 12 hours. In order to 100% the game, expect closer to 15 hours. So, yeah. Wow. Not that much uh, longer than- That's it's shorter Ratchet. than I thought, to be honest. R- Ratchet is not on sale. Full price. <sighs> then we wait. <laughs> <laughs> then we wait or we riot all right um mortal kombat well, 11's on sale and don't we get 
10 for free. Boy, I'm getting 10 for free. Uh, I don't need that <laughs> to be fair, it is on sale from it's down from 49.99 75% off, so it's 13 bucks. So, oh, wow. why, why isn't that one just free then? Yeah. I don't know. It's now well, the we, sale podcast. <laughs> no, that's going to be right? the next one. Um <laughs> We are going to end this thing out. We want to thank you all for listening. Again, new episodes upload every Friday, wherever your ear holes or eye holes want to, to be at. Um, if there's somewhere where we're not, let us know. We are at Log On Games on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, everywhere else. Probably be Twitch streaming some big team battle Halo Infinite goodness this weekend. So go fi- find us at twitch.tv backslash Log On Games and we will come play with us and we'll, we'll do it up that's going to do it for yeah. us here we'll be with you all again next friday see ya peace oh, let's break it.